Hi there, I know I'm always coming to you talking about business, but today we're going to answer probably the biggest question of eternity. What happens when you die? Oh my gosh, right here, right now on Ally and You. Welcome to Ally and You, the business success and lifestyle show. I am Allison Maslin. My friends call me Ally, and we do all things business growth, growth for the business owner on this show. And we are actually we've been on, running the show now for eight years. I can't believe it. Uh, but today is going to be an over the top show and. Have you ever wondered what happens when you die, right? I mean, this has been like one of the biggest questions in history. Well, you might actually get that answer on today's show because the guest here is a dear friend of mine who actually worked with me uh, as a, was her business coach several years ago and man has she skyrocketed. Christina Rasmussen is an acclaimed grief educator, best-selling author, two times over, and founder of the Life Reentry Institute, a program that trains therapists and counselors on how to help their patients re-enter life after loss. This is kind of flipping grief, you know, on its back. Christina has helped countless people break free from the waiting room of grief with a new model of treatment based on neuroscience. Her goal is to revolutionize the way we approach grief in the medical, corporate, and social environments. And, you know, grief in so many ways, whether it's grief of, you know, loss of a career, loss of a loved one, a divorce. There's, I mean, we all experience loss. What if you were able to move through it in a whole different way? And as a result, we use this loss to experience our greatest growth. Um, in addition to her book, Second First, which was like a massive bestseller, she has just released a book called Where Did You Go? And it's a life-changing journey to collect, connect with those we have lost. And so uh, help me welcome Christina Rasmussen. So good to be here with you, Allison. I am so excited to talk about everything that has to do with life and death. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And you might be thinking, what does this have to do with business? But hey, without life, then we have no business, right? So... <laughs> I really believe the inside is what impacts us on the outside. Mm -hmm. And the way we look at our life of what's happening now and in the future will help you make all the decisions that you make. So where did you go? And so let's dive right in because I'm so excited you're here. You and I have known each other for a long time and yeah. I've had the honor of really seeing you make these declarations years ago <laughs> yeah. of this is so of her mission you want to know the power of intention <laughs> and then watching it all unfold and so um let's back up because a lot of people watching don't mm -hmm. know you and your story what happened in your life that started your journey in this work and as a writer um as working with people with grief you know, I was living my life just like everyone else. Um, we had two little girls, uh, my husband and I. Um, Isabel was nine months old. Um, Elena was two and a half years old. And we had just moved from, um, from, uh, from California to Boston. And just like that, Allison, one day, my 31-year-old husband at the time said to me, I feel this lump on my neck. And we didn't know what it was at the time, and he went to the doctors, and everything changed completely. And I will never forget that day. I, I still get goosebumps as I'm saying this right now, when the doctor looked at us and said, 
to my husband that he had a metastatic colon cancer and he she thought that he had about six months to live wow. and at the time <laughs> I remember uh, being dehydrated <laughs> and, and I talk about that moment because your life completely vanishes from before you and I know a lot of people who are watching today have had impactful moments, tragic circumstances, and their life have changed. And nobody really talks about what happens in that moment of impact. So my life at the time went from being a stay-at-home mom with two little kids and my husband to a caregiver for three and a half years. We traveled the world trying to um, keep him alive. Um, we didn't make it. He died uh, at age 35. And um, from that day forward, I started my new life and my new chapter. And I made a lot of discoveries from that day on. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you had told me then, if you had told that Christina, because that Christina is not here today, um, that you are about to do all these great things and you're going to write books and you're going to help so many people, I would have just looked at you and laughed because there was no way at the time, I didn't even think I was going to survive this devastating event. And, yeah. and that, that's how everything began. You know, an interesting thought and, you know, because when someone dies, you don't go, oh, well, the plus side of that was. But I wonder, I mean, I'm sure he knows that how he has been a catalyst yes. for you literally changing thousands of people's mm -hmm. lives and helping them to not only overcome grief, but to soar yeah. in that next, uh, next chapter. And in the beginning, I have to be honest and say in the first few years, it was horrible. And that's when I entered what I now call the waiting room. Um, and everyone thought that I was living this next chapter of my life. I worked in the corporate world. I was, you know, I, I was feeding my children. I had health, you know, insurance for my kids. I was a, a single mom with a full-time job. I did everything right. And I was so unhappy. And it was about was it, three and a half, four years after the loss where I said, I cannot live like this anymore. And I realized the time that I had made all of my decisions based on fear, based on, you know, I have to get this job even though I don't like it because I have to take care of my kids. I have to pay for, for every bill and, and not based on, you know, inspiration and, and, to, and perspective. I, I, I basically faced death and I lost the, the person who was the most important person in my life. And even then, I did not at the time say, life is you know, short, is, is priceless, and we need to live it fully. I turned around and said yes to my fears yeah. and, and, and went in, in, in the waiting room. Yeah, yeah. and so what was the where was the shift? I, you know, when you feel so unhappy inside of you, you can actually stay with that unhappiness for a long time. And then when you can't go further, you burst into tears and you know there is no way but to stop this life. So what I didn't know that was I was in, the, in between two lives. The life I had to leave behind me because he died. And this life here that I have now, but I thought I was already in this life and I was in a place in between. And I remember, um, and for those you know, for those of you out there who, who resigned from your jobs, I remember going to my boss at the corporate job. Um, I was a, a human resources business partner, so everyone knows. Um, and, I, and I had hired, um, I always think, what if they're watching me now watching this, but I hired my boss and I trained my boss and I was training her and I remember saying, that's it, I'm quitting. So I went and resigned and I gave my two week notice and she was in shock. And I was in shock too. The moment I did that, it was almost like the universe literally realigned Wow! everything. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. Although there was lots of stuff in between. Yes. yes. So, so then the waiting room mm -hmm. is like sort of what society says where you've got to be and where you got to stay until you get over your grief. What is that? So the waiting room is this uh, infinite loop of grief and loss. So 
when something really catastrophic happens in your life, the society and the world tells you these words, and I know you've heard them, Alison, and everyone has, wait for time to heal you. Yeah. Don't make any decisions. Give it time. I mean, how many times do we hear these yeah. words, right? So many times. So I went and waited and waited and waited and nothing happened and I wasn't feeling better. So what has, something happens to the brain when we wait. Actually, the brain does not like change. So grief puts us in the waiting room because we need time to heal and, and, and feel better. And fear keeps us in there. Mm -hmm. So it's not grief that keeps you stuck in that life you don't want after your loss. It is the fear of, of trying to figure out what you can create and, and being so afraid. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to find a way to sneak out of our fear center, which I call the survivor self. In my first book, Second Verse, we talk about the survivor self a lot. And, and slowly get out of that place in between and start to build and re-enter your life. And Alison, over the eight years I've been doing this work, I've had thousands, literally thousands of emails from people saying to me, when they hear the definition of what the waiting room is, the, the place in between the life you live behind and the life you could have, they write with tears. That's where I've been. Oh my God, that, I didn't know. And even that, I don't even have to give them any more advice, anything, just the knowledge of where they are right. and that they could exit that place. Is, yeah. Is, yeah, liberating. Isn't that it yeah. is when you really give a picture of that, and it's almost like they're like she understands yeah. me. Yes. And so, what is it about re-entering? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like that's really what you've you've taught people mm -hmm. over these eight years, and it's just been you just don't see grief talked about this yeah. way. And I, I know several of my clients that have done your work yeah. and uh, in, in your, bar, your book, your first mm -hmm. book, second mm -hmm. first, we're going to talk about the second one. Yes. But if you haven't read the first <laughs> one, read that one too. And, um, and that's life changing. So mm -hmm. talk about reentry. So reentry is um, a, a combination of steps, first very small steps. You know, people say, you know, jump and leap and, and the net will appear. Well, the brain tells you not to leap and not to jump because it's going to kill you. It's going to hurt you. So the fear center tries to keep you in. So we start with small steps and we use passion and inspiration versus fear and worry to decide the direction of our lives. Um, so the whole life reentry process you know, is made of um, the first step, which is the invisible losses. You know, um, you don't have to have experienced the loss of a spouse or a loss of a child um, or even divorce. A loss of a job, uh, abandonment from your parents and friends, rejection. These are what I call invisible losses mm -hmm. and they're harder oh. to re-enter from because we don't validate them, we don't see them and we don't acknowledge them. Right. Yeah. We just think something's wrong with us. And right? we don't even know. We're confused. Why? Yeah. Why? I'm doing everything I can but something is keeping you back. Unless we process that, we can move forward. Um, and then we move through what I call the plug-in, you know, like a, a plug. Um, so imagine you're in the waiting room, so you literally plug into the new life. Yeah. So you slowly plug into that new life, and then you go into um, discovering who you are now. Your, new, your identity today versus the identity you had prior to the, the loss that you had is not the same. Yeah. And if you're trying to live that old life, it's like visiting a ghost town. There's yeah. no, nobody gonna be there. Nothing is ever gonna happen from the old life. You cannot go back there again. It's like trying to put on clothes from your childhood. Right? That's right. <laughs> yes. That aren't gonna fit. They're or never like, gonna fit. Yeah. Well, so, for some people they do. Well, this is true, this is true. <laughs> not us. <laughs> That's a different show. That's a different yes. show. So, um, so let's talk about this mm -hmm. transition because, you know, there I can see that pathway, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're talking about life and death. And I think as you've done a lot of work to mm -hmm. explore helping yes. people, you've discovered some that amazing wonders. things yeah. that fa really fascinates me <laughs> and I wanted to share with you. So um, what catapulted you to write yes. this new amazing book that you have to get? Go run out and get it right now. In fact, get like five copies or ten <laughs> copies. Where did you go? So let's talk about so, this. So um, 
I had re-entered my life, um, you know, in this new profession and, um, and, and I was enjoying myself, a new love, my husband Eric, I was remarried, we moved to California. And I remember sitting at the deck, you know, I have this, you know, sunrise deck, I call it, and, and I experienced something really amazing there. And, and you know, even though I had, I had figured my life out, I helped many people figure their lives out, there was one question, truly one question that remained, what happens when we die? And that, if you told me early on that you're going to take all these people to the other side, I was so afraid, Alison, when, when he died, I had my lights on day and night for months. Any noise in the house, <laughs> I would be absolutely petrified of it. So this was a big decision, but I started exploring and I discovered a world that is so incredible. And I started So, to, so let's yeah, back up. Yes. So you were afraid of ghosts, oh, basically, yes. is what she's saying. <laughs> Big and, time. <laughs> and I, I've told you this before, yeah. but I'm terribly afraid of that. Yeah. So like in my house, if I go from the bedroom into the kitchen, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I'm brave, I'm brave. I mean, it's just so ridiculous, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm not a kid. And I run oh. back and I start walking and then I'm like, Seriously, running yes. into the bedroom because yes. this just massive place of dark. Yes. I mean, and I'm sure you can like start analyzing me if you want to. No, but I feel the same way. I still do to this day. But I said to myself, what if there was another way to explore that frontier mm -hmm. with math, with science, with physics, with atoms and particles? And I am not a physicist and I am not someone who has gone to university. I don't have a PhD in consciousness. Um, so I started reading and oh my goodness, I didn't just find, I mean, I went to find death and instead I found life. I, find, I found creation. I, I mean, this book starts with connecting with those we've loved in a very unique way. Um, there's a, for those who, who have the book, we have a private group called Where Did You Go? with a thousand readers. They're all doing these journeys together and it's an inc incredible experience to to witness them. I went to find death and discover what happened to my husband and what happens when we die. I wanted to know for myself. And instead I found, I mean, creation. This is where we create from. This is where we come from. This is where we go to. This is where deeper, the deeper reality is. This is where everything comes from and it is not a dark and scary place. Alison, we're made of light. We're made of light and we go back to light. Yeah, that's just, it is. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, that I really connect with yeah. that because I know on a deepest, our deepest level, we are energy yes. and molecules and atoms. Yes. Like I get it. This desk is also molecules. Yes. It's the same. Here, as, it's the same yes. and we're all connected. Yes. I know we're getting a little woo woo out there for but you. It's true. But it's true. It is true. It's true. Yeah. And it's, you know, like quantum physics, yes. it's just very, very fascinating. Yeah. So, so let's go deeper with this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what are the things that you've discovered? So I had to figure out a way to allow for my brain to take me all the way until it could let go. So um, I created this opening. So imagine taking all the theories that I've learned and putting together a real journey to the other side. I don't like the word the other side, but for everyone to understand what we mean, um, I call it the deeper reality and that's what it's really about. Um, it's non-local. It has no time. So it's kind of like the matrix. It's kind of like, <laughs> so, but we, so this is the third dimension where we live every day and we should be here. Right. And we should experience the third dimension in this way. But there's something called, and I don't want to get too far out there, but there's something called the holographic universe. And actually scientists came really close to proving the holographic universe. So this is actually a, almost like a hologram that's being projected from the second dimension. So when we die, my explanation is, it's just their hologram that goes away. 
that, that projection of the hologram, not consciousness, not what they're made of. Energy can never be destroyed. And there's, there's a, a very well-known um, scientist called Robert Lanza, and he basically says, when we die, we die in someone else's reality and not in ours. Wow. So the person, my husband who died, he couldn't, his awareness did not stop. Okay. It continued. But my awareness of him was gone. Right. Because his projection, his but physical... He's, so I'm just, so yeah. here's my mind trying yeah. to like yeah. grasp all this. And I totally get this yeah. and believe it. But if you were to really say, okay, so if he's continuing on mm -hmm. and he's here, he's no, is he aware that he's mm -hmm. not able to interact? And is he interfacing with a whole different world? So imagine this reality that we go to after being alive here is is so different than the way, the logical way that we look at things. Um, imagine you can be everywhere and anywhere just like this. Imagine there is no time. Imagine that you're connected to everything and everyone. People who have um, experiences through meditation and some through drugs, um, I have not done that yet and because I'm, I'm maybe too sensitive and I was thinking to myself, imagine if I actually go there, I probably I don't know, I'm afraid never to come back, but, um, but you, you experience this um, connection to the whole universe mm -hmm. and you feel love about everything and everyone and there is no I and there is no ego, there is the universe and you right. are the universe and you are part of the universe. There is no d differentiation between you and everything else and when we're born as children, you know, That's I remember feel. my first degree, my, my first bachelor's is in education. I remember one of our lectures that they were saying that kid, babies can't separate themselves from everything else when they're born. Yeah. Because we come from this place. Right. That yeah. everything is to connect And really, if you think about the theory of relativity, mm -hmm. there is, I mean, time is an illusion. Yes. And we've seen that over and over again. When people aren't aware of time, they don't feel the lack of time. You know, I remember reading um, in Ageless Body, Timeless Mind with Deepak Chopra. I have to get that book. Years ago. Yeah. It was one of the first books that I read kind of in this personal yeah. growth movement. And he tells a story about these coal miners that get stuck in a, you know, I don't know what you call it, but the whole thing caved in, like an yes. avalanche in the coal mine. Us. And um, so they were stuck waiting to be rescued and you know they told the story is that the the ones that had the watch that were aware of the time were the ones that didn't make it you know and wow. so i and i do we kind of live in this oh i only have so much time yeah. and and so forth but it really is like if you allow yourself to go deep enough and which you learn how to do this in yes. this book right you're able to kind of break through that. The illusion. I mean, this, I, you know, I know it feels very real and it's supposed to. This is, this truly is an illusion. And when, when someone dies, it's so hard to believe that they still exist because, because they're, not, they're not in the same way that we mm -hmm. were so used to having them. And we are supposed to grieve. You know, even if we know that they continue on, right. they're not with us the way they were supposed to. So we're supposed yeah. to miss their physical, that physical experience. However, we can still connect. Yeah. And not just only people who are psychic and mediums. Yeah. Everyone can access the consciousness of the person they've lost. And those of you that have had a loss, a, lo mm -hmm. a loss of a loved one, there is some comfort in that too. It would be oh, nice yeah. to be able to tap in and open the door. Oh, what are they up to, <laughs> you know? But you can. I mean, that's the thing. And, and you know, for, for your audience, you know, for those who have not experienced a loss and they're like, oh, you know, how does that relate to me? I think this relates to everyone. We all, we all are born and we all die. And um, halfway through uh, the book, there is a massive plot twist because once we experience the connection with the consciousness that it's no longer in a physical body, your loved ones, and we keep moving further and deeper, the book becomes a manifestation tool. That's what people have been calling it. A manifestation <laughs> tool. So, okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh my so, goodness. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that, so the idea of manifestation is that, okay, you're all, you are energy. You can mm -hmm. bring anything into anything. your life that you desire. 
So yes. through this process, this life-changing journey yeah. is really, so let's talk about that. Yeah. So there's an exercise in the book, and as you keep going deeper and deeper, I ask the reader, once they're in what I call the temple journey, to look for an object. This is so exciting. So you look for an object um, there and you find it. People find all sorts of different things. Okay. So they look at it in the journey uh, while they are in this meditation, let's say, even though that's not the right word for it. Um, and then they come back here. And then in the next few days or weeks, it's gonna show up. It is really gonna show up. And that exercise begins the process of helping the brain believe and find the proof that we are connected to that invisible reality. All right, that is so weird mm -hmm. that you say this because I just had a realization and I don't know, probably the other, other interviews people are saying the same <laughs> no, thing. No, please tell me. No, I had, I don't really, I, I've tried meditating yes. so much over the years and yeah. I like suck at it, but I was doing, what was I doing? Now I can't remember when it was. Oh, I know. I know, I know. So I do, um, I, I've written out my vision of what I want to create mm -hmm. in, in the, my business, in my mm -hmm. life, my relationship, mm -hmm. and I read it every morning. Mm -hmm. And I close my eyes, and I, don't, I can't even tell you what day this was, maybe three or four days ago. And um, I was just visualizing what I was reading, and what came to me was a rose like a dark mm -hmm. sort of like blood red almost rose and I thought to myself oh a rose hmm, wonder what that's about and that's really pretty and that's it well I was just at the Grammys on Sunday which was incredible yes. and um, there was we stayed at um, the JW Marriott and we're you checked in, there was this, there were vases everywhere of roses mm -hmm. all the way across, the, like these dark red roses. And I remember thinking, wow, I've never seen, um, you know, roses displayed mm -hmm. like that and so many that was so striking. You know, I would, so then the, you know, the devil's advocate goes, oh, well, that had nothing to do with anything. It had everything to do with that. You actually, two things happen you actually were able to see the rose from there from from your you know you you leaped into the future yeah and you saw it before you got there oh my because goodness. you you when you were doing this visualization you leaped out of t you left this experience yeah uh, i had a, a friend who told me that um some people we, we give them tools to exit some people can just go just like you did Someone was playing um, the violin, I believe, um, and he has been reading the book without doing the journeys. And he had the book in his mind, he was playing the violin, he had these lessons. This is a grown up in his 50s. And he left his body just like that and came back. And he knew what it was because he'd been reading, but he was blown away by it. And so when you say left his body, yeah, tell me what you mean. It's like you go out of time. It's, it's, it's an experience where all of a sudden you're not here anymore and it happens really fast. So physically you would look yes. at him and see, oh, he's, he's there. there, but yeah. like his soul and consciousness. He or... he's gone, leaped out and went far away and came back. And it was, it, it, it was, um, it was almost like an out of body experience and it was very sudden and unexpected. So people can do that by accident and people have done that by accident, or you can initiate it and you can train your brain to take you all the way to the edge to look for things in the, in the world beyond this one and see them there and bring them here in the physical reality. Consciousness interacts with energy in and out, in and out, mm -hmm. and it creates matter. I heard um, a quote once, and I don't know exactly how it is, but basically, it, it, once you've desired something, it yes. already exists. Yes, oh. Yes. It's already there. So all you have to do is, all you have to do is draw it in, right? But you have to believe that it's... Belief is the... Is, and understand yeah. that the desire wouldn't have happened unless it was there yeah. already. So there's a, something called the observer effect. And when we observe... So we have infinite potential and possibilities. So there's a version of us that I am sitting on your chair, you're sitting on this chair. There's a version of us that did this during the day. 
There's a version of us that didn't do it at all. There's a version of us that I'm wearing a different color. There's infinite billion versions of this. And this is what happens, and this is what we do in the book. We, Are you we, tripping out yet? We go, <laughs> <laughs> we go to this uh, that I call the temple of the universes. So we collapse. So your, your observation of one version of this reality, when you're in there, will collapse all the other versions. So you will bring into creation the one you observe. So it's that idea of wherever you put your focus yes, and intention, yes. you create it. This is real science. Yeah. That's, and that's the thing people don't realize, you know, this is real. And what upsets me, and one of the reasons why I said yes to the book, and for a long time I said no to it, because I had created this body of work with life reentry, and I had done so much <laughs> good in the world, and here I am coming out with this, you know, out of the ordinary book. But how can I not? When there's so much uh, education and science, we've come so far in our discoveries, but not in our experiences. Yeah, and I think what you've done is take this science yes. that probably yeah. feels like it's over people's head it to is. even Mine explore too. it, yeah. and take it in a way that we can consume it and yeah. understand. And so, use it yeah. to experience things. And I'm sure for yeah. you crossing over, you get a lot of people going, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then of course, some people might feel that it contradicts with their religious beliefs. Yes. Right? Yeah. So I'm sure you're getting some backlash yeah. there. So yes. how, how are you dealing with that? So there's been, it's been an incredible journey and there were days when it was so intense, so many emails, so many comments, posts, people experiencing, people not experiencing, people seeing the others experiencing and like, and, and so I had intense uh, emotions from both sides. The people who are having extraordinary experiences and they're like blown away by it. And then the others who are not having them and they're frustrated because something inside of them tells them, I can do this, I wanna do this. And then they see others who do it and experience and, 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 and go to these places. So it was, it's been a, and then of course I had a religious, um, I do wanna say that I, I, I believe in a, in a higher power. Mm -hmm. I believe in a, in a God. Um, people talk about the Bible a lot to me and how if this is not in the Bible, then it's not true. And I don't want us to, to go over this a lot, but I'm Christian. I grew up Greek Orthodox, actually. So I'm, I'm like most people um, who are reading this book. But I do believe that we all believe in the same thing. There was an observer that created this. Mm -hmm. The first observer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That saw the Big Bang. Yeah, it's just really <laughs> taking it and breaking yeah. it down. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so... Uh, I, I, just, I feel like it's so fascinating and it helps us to look at life in a whole, whole different way. Yes. And so what advice do you give for people who are stuck, who are kind of feel like I can't see beyond this? Mm -hmm. how, what can you help them? How can you help them shift First that? First of all, I want to say the stuckness is real and it's very hard. We're dealing with this brain that is old and does not like to do anything new. Imagine asking it to go into another world. <laughs> Talk about new and, and different. So know that what you're about to do is not easy and don't tell yourself you should do better or know better or be better. This is hard and validating and acknowledging that is key. We can't go further. If we don't say this, this is hard and you're about to do something very heroic by by stepping out into a new life and a new way of looking at the world. And the very first thing I want to say, if someone is really far away from this knowledge, let's say, energy, um, you know, multiple dimensions, the observer effect, um, consciousness, brain science, you know, with the other book, if, if you're far away from this, I want you to start thinking about the things you do want versus the things you don't want and, and to write down all the things that you have been hiding inside of you. Because I know for a fact, these things that are hidden are the ones that are keeping you stuck. And my worry in the world has been that there's millions of people who die in that place in between. Mm -hmm. We wanna free them, we wanna get them out. It's not easy, yeah. but it is possible and it is your birthright and you deserve to have a life full of, 
I call it the miraculous life. There's a, a chapter in the book that when we collapse the worry life and the status quo life, you know, when things just keep going, routine, yes. we can look at the miraculous version of our life. Yeah. And that, uh, we, we should all have that. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, both those things, I think that, can you imagine not having worry? <laughs> what, if, what if you put that to rest? And what if you stopped, like, saying, yeah, life is good enough. I'm good. I got a roof over my head and, you know, relationships okay, you know, decent relationship with my kids yes. and careers okay. Like, yeah, it's okay. But is that extraordinary? No. Right? It's not, we're not evolving like that. Yeah. So yeah. that's the potential. Oh, and, and being human. Um, and, and just so you know, inside your body, you have this energy and consciousness. That is extraordinary. And this... This body I'm makes getting us, excited. I don't know about you, but I <laughs> This body makes you forget that. Yeah. And, and the routine of our everyday life makes us forget how extraordinary we are yeah. completely. And all we're asking here today is to be reminded of the spark of the light. I say we are vibrating strings of light. And that's true. Actually, this is not like just a pretty word mm -hmm. sentence. It is true. Right. We are vibrating strings of light. We vibrate and we interact with the energy around us. Um, and it is important for us to remember and to know this and to step in our life every day from that place. Um, joy, um, happiness, uh, peace is, um, is something that we need to go after yeah. every day. Yeah. yeah, and it is, you're right. And, and what you were saying before, uh, that our brains are, like, how old? Oh, my God. I think, I don't, there is a number, though. It's yeah, very, it's, it's like an, millions of years it's, old. It's very old. And yeah, maybe it, not millions. And the only... Hundreds of thousands. Do you uh, know, Ryan? <laughs> it's a lot. It's, I'm not going to quote that. But Let's is, just say it is, like, you know. It's ancient. Yeah, it's and, ancient. And But, you know, I've... We've talked about this on other interviews. I've had mm -hmm. John Asaroff on yes. here, and I'm thinking, isn't it time for a reboot? I mm -hmm. think that we need Brain 2.0. Yes. Brain 2.0, yes. right? Because yes. if we're dealing with that fight or flight response that we had to, you know, survive as That's right. cavemen and women, and all of the mm -hmm. things that we were dealing with with the ice ages and yes. all of that. So no wonder why. There's so much fear yes. because, you know, you think that you could die at any moment. Well, something bad is going to happen to you. If you, if you change your life, if you take a step outside of the default setting that your brain wants to stay in every single day. And like I said, do not underestimate the power of this old brain that we have with us. It wants to keep us living the same life and right. we have to fight for it. And in, in order to keep us safe. That yes. was sort of That's the right. idea. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, but it is time for a reboot. And if you can imagine not having those things, using what Christina talks about mm -hmm. in this book and in her other book, Second First, um, it, you can reboot your brain and have an extraordinary life. And let me tell you, as I said before, I had the honor of <laughs> working with you. Yes. And that was a gift that day yes. that you reached out to me. Do you I remember? Will, like I will never forget. Yes. Um, Christina watched, you watched a live stream yes. of me yes. uh, at That's an right. event. Like, I think it was my very first yeah. event I hosted. It was a long time. And I remember I knew I had to work with this woman. And I remember, and you told me, and I remember I said, I want this, I have this mission, and I believe, and that passion has been there all along from the beginning. And you said, Christina, this is what you can do. And you wrote it all out. And I remember my brain, of course, my, my passion was coming from, from the energy around my destiny. I mean, this was my destiny. Mm -hmm. And I remember my, my brain was looking, can I really do, do this? And you were like, and you were very calm about it. And I remember this, yes. And the, in the calmness, mm -hmm. there was so much certainty. Yeah, and that my actually, because I felt it. But but that's why it's so important to have people around us. And and I talk a lot about how we have collective observers. So let's say you have a group of friends around you, or mentors, or family that do not um, believe in you. They're actually co collectively observing a version of the reality that you don't want, and they are co-creating the, the the reality that you don't want to have. 
When if people say, when people say, you know, make sure you have the right friends and the right people around yeah. you. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's so true who you surround yourself yes. because it's, we can be so vulnerable. Yes. To that yes. negative energy that yes. can pull us So down. when you have an observer, and I'm going to say, I'm going to use that word. When you have an observer, mentor, a coach, a friend, a, a father, a mother who believes in you, you start to observe the reality they see for you. Yeah. They, so they better like be a, a good mirror. one. But you beca- so yeah. that day you were the mirror and you believed that you, I could do it. And then I believed that I could. And that we, we were, I started then observing that same reality. Yeah. And more and more it's, people came. I mean, isn't that wild? Yeah. If we would have opened the door and seen in the crystal ball, yeah. the future that we're sitting here mm-hmm. eight years later yeah. and Christina has created a movement. If you're not following her on social media, check her out. And it's the page is second first. So still. second first and li- uh, lifefreeandrew.com. Christina Rasmussen.com has everything. Okay. So people right. can go we'll there. Put all yes. Of that yeah. Up there yeah. on the bottom third. Yeah. Christina Rasmussen.com. Mm-hmm. Lifefreeandrew.com. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, get this book. Where did you go? I think this. I know that this will blow your mind. <laughs> and hey. Uh, what else do you got to do? <laughs> Get your mind blown. And I know I have, and I love this woman. And she is, you know, she is all heart in there. And you have helped so many people get out of that waiting room of pain to have that that next beautiful chapter. Yeah. So it can happen. Check Christina Rasmussen out. Definitely go out and get her book. Get for her, for your friends, for Valentine's Day, for Mother's Day, whatever. And um, they will absolutely thank you for it. And so you can check us out every week on this show live on Wednesdays at four or on, on our Facebook or on all of the social, all the um, channels for podcasts and iTunes and Spotify and all of that. And definitely, if you haven't got a copy of my new book, Scale or Fail, grab it um it just became a wall street journal bestseller yay Yay. and uh super excited about it just to help you get over that wall on the business side of life all right and until next time get out there elevate yourself because you are worth it bye everybody People always talk about they want to be part of uh, seven-figure companies. I'm now part of seven, eight, and nine-figure companies. I've been introduced to some of the largest corporations, uh, Fortune 500 companies, and it's with Allison's help, she's kind of expanded my horizons and my capabilities. And I think that's the most important thing where she expands, she, she makes you know what you can do and be successful at that. Being with Allison and being able to learn who to hire and why to hire and how to develop a passionate, creative, inspired team was really, really important for me because I needed to shift some energy in my business. And I feel like with her help, I've really done that. Pinnacle helped me grow my company to where at this point, a year ago, I'm making a, I made a million more than I did at this point last year. So I really wanted to break that ceiling. I've hit that ceiling for several years in a row and Pinnacle has helped me do that by implementing the thought. It's, it's actually just a thought process and how you view your company and how you view what you're doing. I think a lot of us entrepreneurs are hard on ourselves and are hard on our companies when it's not that we shouldn't be that way. So I think it's just looking at things a little bit differently, um, putting into practice the systems that she teaches us. Uh, for example, if you want an example, um, putting people in place to where I want my business to be at in two, three years. So I've got people right now in place and it's wild. It's just like it's all the work is coming in and we're in place and we're not stressed out. And it's just amazing. It's just an amazing place to be. What I love most about being in the Pinnacle is constant access to support. So whether it be my mastermind group or the recorded resources that Allison has produced for us or the constantly cutting edge information that's coming to us on social media, Facebook ads, how to conduct webinars, I mean, you name it, we have a resource for it. So since joining Pinnacle, we've added 12 new positions to the company. We've increased revenue about 43%. 
We've increased profit by 111% um, this year. More importantly, I've gotten out of some roles um, that I was in, like QA manager and some of the marketing um, things that I was doing are now outsourced, or not outsourced, insourced to a, a team member. Um, and I've really focused in on running the business instead of letting it run me. Uh, coaching opportunities out there, and a lot of times I'm, I'm a little bit suspicious. It's a kind of a sales job, you know, are they, are they in it for themselves, are they in it for me? And at no time have I ever felt with Pinnacle that my best interest was not number one priority. And it's truly an organization, and not just Allison and the coaches, but everyone there, it's a, coming from a, a place of giving and um, working for mutual benefit, a lot, a lot of sharing going on, and that's a, a great team to work with. Uh, right off the bat, I laid a foundation for my coaching practice, and I increased my prices, uh, and within one week I had signed two high paying clients that had basically paid for my, co my coaching program with Allison and since then um, my income has doubled every single month. It's been tremendous but being a part of the community has been the greatest asset. I've been so fortunate and blessed to befriend so many other amazing entrepreneurs who I learn from on a regular basis, who always have my back, like-minded people that I surround myself with and the environment is, is so positive. I just cannot speak highly enough of it and I am always compelled to share it with everyone I know. I feel it is the biggest gift to introduce and share this opportunity to connect with this kind of community uh, with everybody that I know. Don't be the company like I was, being in business for over 12 years, looking back and saying, what did I do in the last 10 years? Do it now. Now is all we have. We don't have the past and we don't have the future. All we have is now. I've been in business for 21 years now and I've worked with a number of business coaches. And I watched Allison for four years and the results that her clients had when they worked with her and I finally decided this is the next coach that I'm going to hire because she is the real deal. She is available to her people. She absolutely cares deeply about each and every individual and the success of their business. And you know what? We have to, in business, take risks. And sometimes taking risk is hiring that new coach. This is a risk worth taking. There is nothing like it. I can't even explain um, what the opportunity and the learning um, that comes with Pinnacle. Don't even think about it, because if you think about it, that's the number one thing that will hold you back. Just do it. You won't regret it. You just need to do it. I mean, you have to stop being on the fence. You have to get off the, the, the fence is boring. The fence is honestly, I was on the fence for, oh gosh, I was on the fence for maybe two years. And it was a horrible fence to sit on. I hated the fence because the fence kept me stuck. And it was when I finally jumped off the fence that my business skyrocketed.